How are you doing this evening? Uh, I hope that uh, you've had a great day. Uh, as we get ready to go over our prayer list, our prayer concerns, uh, I hope that you will have your, your prayer list out and your study guide uh, right beside your side. Uh, as we look from God's Word at the last chapter, the fifth chapter of uh, 1 Thessalonians. Uh, before we do that, though, let's do something. I'd like for us to look at our prayer list. If you would look at your prayer list right now with me, I'd appreciate that. And uh, what we'll do is we'll take just a second and uh, look at this together. If you would take a look at the uh, those with special concerns, uh, we have Herrick Garnett and Rose Bookman. We have Gary Duke and Scott Benton, Kimberly Britton. Uh, if you also would allow your eyes to uh, follow down just a little bit further to Diane George and also to, if you would look at uh, David Jordan and Barbara and Frank Walker, Jeff and Sandra Taylor, Kim Hyatt, Julie Atkinson, Louise Krieger, Fred Waller. Kathy Crone, Debbie Peake, Cindy Bruce, Martha Price, Scout Craig, Laverne Ramsey, son's wife, needs a liver transplant. I'd like to get her name uh, so we can put her name on here rather than having Laverne Ramsey's son's wife going through two people. Y'all, Jean Beard is home, convalescing. Margro McKnight, Brenda Mills, Teresa Linkus, David and Robin Knoll, Bubba Garnett, Valley uh, Calgarkus, and Larry Garnett, Pat Patterson. Those who are ongoing cancer treatment, I ask if you would look with me at Deborah Truslow, daughter of Lena, Sheila Willoughby, daughter of Jean Johnston, Bob Spencer, Mary Dunstan's brother-in-law, Tiara Bowden, girlfriend of Jerry Falk, and Harry Smith. And while we're here on this page, if you would take a look at uh, the 100th anniversary ornaments have arrived. Uh, they're $20 a piece. They look really, really nice. They also come in a nice story, a red storage bag that's very, very uh, accommodating and will keep your ornament from year in and year out. Please look at our deepest sympathy. The family of Miriam James, uh, her interment service will be this coming Saturday. The family of Joyce Audrey Watts Knoll on her passing August the 14th and Lacey Tadlock whose service will be September the 10th at 1.30 at St. Stephen's Episcopal Church. That's also the same day that we'll be having our cleanup day for our church family. Our loved ones that's in the military, please look. Uh, Spencer Sharp, Doris and my nephew, Brian Fleet, son of Cecilia, and Charlie, Chris Haynes, son of Susan Haynes, and Victor Rip Ripley III, son of Vic and Betsy. There are those I know that you are mindful of and are praying for. And as we do so, I ask that you would lift up in your own way as we pray together. Will you pray with me? Father, as those who are praying at home are bowed in your presence, I simply ask that you would watch over them, guide them in their prayer life, guide us as we pray together tonight. Father, watch over us as we pray. And as we intercede for individuals, those whom we love, I simply ask, Father, that you would look after those needs that we cannot do anything about. We lift those needs to you through the Holy Spirit. Father, touch those individuals who need to be touched and healed. Comfort those through the strong arm of the Holy Spirit that you would give them comfort. And Father, be with us tonight as we bow together over the internet, in our homes, and at church. 
Lord Jesus, thank you for your love, for understanding us, and for caring for us. For we simply ask this in your wonderful and your holy name. Amen. I now ask you if you would take just a moment and if you would look at your uh, study guide your study guide that uh, that you have on the back of the uh, prayer sheet, which would really, really be of a, a, a tremendous help, I think, to you, because as it is right now, uh, we're looking at the last chapter, and uh, we're going to be looking at what Paul had to say to the church of Thessalonica, he, in the first verse, one through eight, we find where Paul is saying the Lord's accountability. The Lord is accountable to us. He says, now concerning how and when all this will happen. Do you remember we concluded last week with the second coming? And the part of the heart of this letter was due to the fact that many of the Thessalonians thought that Jesus had already come back. That rumor had come from other churches, from Colossia, from Ephesus, that Jesus had returned and the poor Thessalonians had been left behind. Paul was emptying his heart out here. He says, that is not true. Now look at, look at uh, the, uh, the, the first part of this chapter concerning how and when all this will happen, dear brothers and sisters, talk about the second coming. We do not really need to write you, for you know quite well that the day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly. Like a thief in the night, when people are saying everything is peaceful and everything is secure, then disaster will fall on them as suddenly as a pregnant woman's labor pains begin. And there will be no escape but you aren't in the dark about these things. He's saying, you have heard about these things. Dear brothers and sisters, and here again, look at this. I told you all that the latter part of his ministry, Paul no longer said, dear brothers and brothers and brothers. He realized the Holy Spirit had encompassed women as a part of the household of faith. So now he says, brothers and sisters. But you aren't in the dark about these things, dear brothers and sisters. And you won't be surprised when the day of the Lord comes like a thief. For you are all children of the light and of the day. But don't belong to darkness and night. So be on your guard. Not asleep like the others. Stay alert and be clear-headed. Night is the time when people sleep and drunkards get drunk. But let us who live in the light be clear-headed, protected by the armor of faith and love, and wearing as our helmet the confidence of our salvation. For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out his anger on us. Now listen to this. He's reminding the, the believers at Thessalonica he said, I want you to remember all of the things that God has brought to you through the teachings of Epaphras, of Silas, of Timothy, and of me, and other evangelists who've come to preach God's word. Please remember that the day of coming for Christ will come unexpectedly for those who are not prepared. But for those who are prepared and who are looking for it, it will not be a surprise because we live as each day. Is he coming today? Have you thought about that? Have you thought about, is Christ coming today? I, I wonder sometimes when I get up, is it today is coming? I kind of like, like have one eye in the cloud and one eye look, looking around because he wants us to be not constantly looking up into the clouds. Do you remember at his ascension, at the ascension, whenever he went up into the clouds, 
an angel of God came and said, you man of Galilee, why are you standing here gazing up into the clouds? This same Christ whom you have seen ascend will come back in like manner. Be about the Father's business. Jesus gave them instructions. Go into Jerusalem and wait there for instructions for the Holy Spirit, for the paraclete, the pneuma of God to come upon you and visit you at Pentecost. And he did. Now, when you take into consideration what he's saying here on verse 9, he says, For God chose to save us through our Lord Jesus Christ, not to pour out his anger on us. Christ died for us so that whether we are dead or alive, he's saying, look, how can you say that you don't know if Christ has come or not? Y'all know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. If he had come back, you'd be with him. He said, wake up and smell the coffee or wake up and smell the roses. He says, live in your faith. He says, Christ did not pour out his anger on you or me. Christ died for us so that whether we are dead or alive, when he returns, we can live for him forever. So encourage each other. Build each other up just as you are already doing. Now look at verses 9 and 11 that we've already incorporated. Building each other up. How do you do that? How do you? And then he answers that. Look at verse 12. Paul's final advice. Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work and live peacefully with one another. The way you build people up in the Lord is not to be contentious, not to be divisive, not to gossip, not to rumor, not to carry tales but to build each other up in prayer. Open your heart in the understanding of God's love. Pray for one another. Bear each other's burdens. Listen as the priest of God at your elbow. Listening to one another. Interceding for one another as we just got through praying. Y'all, when we take into consideration Paul's advice, Live peacefully with each other. Verse 14. Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. The very thing that I cannot stand is laziness. My parents caused us to. They call, called, caused all of our, my brothers and my sister to be working machines because they did not want us to be lazy. Encourage those who are timid. Take tender care of those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. See that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and to all people. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. And what he says here is so important. He says, praying for one another, believing in one another, caring for one another. He says, all of these are given in the final greeting that he gives to us in verses 22. Listen to this. He says, now may the, may the God of peace make you holy. And in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. God will make this happen. For he who calls you as faithful, dear brothers and sisters, pray for us. Paul said, now, as you build each other up in the Lord, praying for one another, I ask you now, to pray for us who are in prison. Dear brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all the brothers and sisters with a sacred kiss. In the King James Version, it's like a holy kiss. Now, many men in the Middle Eastern countries 
kiss one another. There ain't nothing about it. In America, you kiss another man and you turn into a homophobic. And then if you kiss a woman with a holy kiss today, you'll wind up in jail for sexual harassment. We live in a world that's high tech and low touch. High tech, oh, we're there, but low touch. You don't want to touch. Everybody has a safe distance, much less kiss one another and display affection, even if it's holy. Verse 27, I command you in the name of the Lord to read this letter to all the brothers and sisters and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Again, look at that last verse. I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for everyone to read this letter to all the brothers and who? The sisters. Y'all, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, wants to relieve anxiety from us. Relieving anxiety is living in close proximity with respect. To our Lord. And what Paul is saying in this entire book of Thessalonians is that unless you have a centered focus of God's Spirit to give you tranquility in your heart that gives you clear vision in your mind, you will not be able to live in peace and harmony with one another. Remember this peace and harmony overcomes anxiety. And what he has to say is this, living in the Spirit of God is more important than living with all the opulence this world has to offer. Y'all, so many people I know have so very much and they find misery in all their possessions. All of the latest cars, the latest trinkets, the latest gizmos of electronics, homes, traveling, and after they're all worn out, what do they have? Worn out things. The world tells you, you find peace and harmony in what you're able to possess. Put in your pockets, purchase, attain. But that's not what Paul is writing here. He said, peace comes, peace comes from within and the Spirit of God, and the Ruah of God, the harmony of God, the strength of God. Pray with me. Father, dismiss us with your care. Watch over us with your love. Guide us tomorrow as we learn to pray, as we learn to live harmoniously with you as our Savior, and harmoniously then with everyone else. Y'all, Thessalonians is a great book. I ask you to reread it. It doesn't take but more, more, no more than 15 minutes to read all five chapters. It's been a joy to be with you this month in July and August as we learn together. God bless you. I'll see you Sunday, Communion Sunday. I want you to read very carefully the newsletter that's going out tomorrow. It's so full of news and information. I ask you to pray for our church family and those that are on the prayer list in our newsletter as well. God bless you. I'll see you Sunday.